This is the video for factoring polynomials using the GCF method. At the end of this lesson, you will be able to factor a polynomial using the GCF method. You will identify the GCF of all terms and use backwards distributing. So our first definition, this is a word that refers to the terms that you can multiply to give you a product. This is called factors. Today we're going to practice finding the factors of many different monomials. So down below we are going to list the factors of 30. So remember you are thinking of numbers that multiply to give you a product of 30. So if we just list them as we come up with them, we're going to put them right next to 30 here. So the first number we can use, with the, starting with the lowest number, is 1. and 30. We can also multiply 2 and 15. We can multiply 3 and 10. 4 cannot go into 30 evenly, but we can multiply by 5 and 6. So here you have it. These are all of the factors of 30, the numbers that multiply to give you a product of 30. Let's do the same thing for 24. 1 and 24 can give you a product of 24. 2 and 12. And if you're not sure, remember you can use your calculator and use division to check to see if a number can go into a number like 24. 3 and 8. 4 and 6. And 5 cannot go into 24 evenly, so we are done. So here we have our unorganized list of factors. These are the numbers that multiply to give you these products. So if we can find the factors or list the factors of numbers, we can also find the factors of monomials, including variables. For example, x squared. If you think about what we can multiply to get x squared, here are some examples. Remember, we can always start with 1 and that term. So 1 and x squared will multiply to give you x squared. If we take apart x squared, we could multiply x and x to give us a product of x squared. And that's it for x squared. Let's try a to the third b to the second power. So we will continue starting with 1 and a to the third b to the second. Uh, we can also do, for example, if I just take the letter A and multiply that, well then I would need to multiply by A squared and B squared to give me back A to the third B squared. Let's do another example. If I multiply my first term, if I make it A squared B, well, I would need to multiply that by a, or a to the first power, remember we don't need that one there, but you can put it if you like, b. So a squared b times a b would give me the product a to the third, b to the second. There are some others, but let's try the next one. x to the fourth, y to the third, or y cubed. Let's continue starting with one and our term. And then if I start to take apart x to the fourth, y to the third, hmm, I could start with x squared y, and can you think of the other term that would multiply to give you back x to the fourth, y to the third? If you guessed x squared y to the second, you are correct. Let's think of one more. Maybe we can do x to the third, y to the second. And in this case, the other term we would multiply by would have to be x, y. So these are some of examples of finding the factors of monomials that include variables. Now we're going to work a little bit more with something called the GCF, right up here. So you've probably heard of this before, so please put that in there. Remember that this stands for the greatest common factor. This means that this is the largest monomial 
a combination of some number and a variable that can go into all terms of a polynomial. So we are going to practice identifying the GCF. So let's take a look at 18 and 24. We could sit here and list all the factors of 18 and all the factors of 24. But what I'd really like you to do is just do your best to try and come up with it. For example, uh, some factors of 18 include 2 and 9, 3 and 6, 1 and 18. Some factors of 24 include 2 and 12, 3 and 8, 4 and 6. And out of those, do you know what the GCF would be? If it's easier for you, then you'll want to list all the factors of both and then locate the largest one. In this case, 6 can go evenly into or divide evenly into 18 and 24. 5y and y. So here we have a combination of numbers and variables. In this case, if we take a look at the numbers first, a 5 and a 1 technically doesn't have a GCF because really the GCF is 1 and if it is 1, we don't like to use that. So 5 and 1, we will just leave that blank and then they both have a y. So they both have a y in common. Well, then y is the GCF. Or you could say 1y if you prefer. 16x and 32x squared. First, I'm going to take a look at the coefficients, the numbers in the front. 16 and 32. Can you think of a factor that can go into both of these? If you guessed 16, you are correct. Now when we take a look at the variables here, we have x and x squared, which means 16x has 1x and x squared has 2x's. Well, if we had to decide how many they have in common, this one only has 1 and here's this one, so we would say that they have 1x in common. So the GCF of those two terms would be 16x. The next one here, here's a bigger combo of numbers and variables. So with this example, let's take a look at 18 and 3 first. Do you think you know what the GCF is of these two? If you guessed 3, you are correct. Let's take a look at the first variable here, the letter A. This one has 1A and this one has 2. So the most amount that they share or have in common is 1a. If we take a look at the b variable, this one has 2 and this one has 5. So if you think of it like this, 18ab squared, they have 2b's, and 3a squared, b to the fifth, has 5. Just like this. So the most amount that they have in common or share, they have this one in common and this one. So they have two b's in common or b squared. So 3a b squared is the GCF of these two terms. We're going to continue practicing finding the GCF, but now we're going to actually factor a polynomial using the GCF method. Our goal is to factor the GCF out of each term or think of backwards distributing. I also like you to write this down whenever we factor using the GCF method. Our final answer is going to have the GCF right here. And then we will have a set of parentheses with plus or minus in the middle. So letter A, we are going to factor this polynomial. In this case, we have a binomial. So what we're going to look for first is the GCF out of a 15c and a 10d. So if we consider the numbers first, the largest number that can go into 15 and 10 is 5. If we look at the variables, we have a c and a d. So do these two terms have any variables in common? No. So here's our GCF. And now we will make our set of parentheses. In order to figure out what goes into the set of parentheses, you need to ask yourself, 5 times what would give me back 15c? So let's see, 
5 times 3 would give me 15. And then I need a C, so I'm just going to attach it to the 3. Then we need to ask ourselves, 5 times what will give us the negative 10D? So I have a 5. I need to multiply by negative 2 to get a 10. And it needs a D, so I'm just going to attach the letter D on at the end here. So here you have it, 5 times 3C minus 2D is 15C minus 10D in factored form. Going forward, we're not going to draw in these arcs, we're just using them to help us write out our factored form. So these two expressions are equivalent, here's the binomial, and here it is in factored form. If we were to distribute, we should always get our polynomial back. Letter B. I see 6y squared plus 18. So I'm going to think of my GCF and then come up with my set of parentheses. I see that between a 6 and an 18, the largest factor that can go into both of these is a 6. My first term here has a y squared, but this term over here doesn't have any y's, so that means there are no y's in common. We are ready to put back our missing terms, so we ask ourselves 6 times what will give us back 6y squared. If you guessed y squared, you are correct. The next piece, 6 times what will give us positive 18. So 6 times positive 3 goes right here and close your parentheses at the end. So here we have factored 6y squared plus 18 into factored form below using the GCF method. Let's try one more, letter C. Okay, so the GCF here, I see a 10 and a 5. The greatest common factor here is 5. The first term has an A and a B. The second one only has an A. So I see that they both have 1a in common. I'm ready for my set of parentheses. I'm going to ask myself 5a times what will give me back 10ab. In this case 5 times 2 will give me 10. I already have the a here, so I am just missing a b. And then at the end, 5a times what term will give me 5a? In this case, some of you might be saying nothing, but we do need to put something here in this place. So ask yourself again, 5a times what will give me back 5a itself? If you're thinking positive 1, you are correct. So here we have factored three polynomials. We factor them using the GCF method. Remember, this is really um, a fancy way of thinking of backwards distributing. If we were to distribute this 5a to the 2b and positive 1, we should always get back our original polynomial, and that is how you can check your work going forward. At this time, please write down any questions you may have or any comments for the beginning of class tomorrow, and thank you so much for watching.